<laughs> Welcome back everybody to Let's Play Some Minecraft. It's your boy Weasel, and uh, you might be wondering, what is he doing down here? Hasn't he uh, been down here in uh, his weird mine shafts underneath the earth long enough? No, I'm, I'm, I'm back and I'm working on a little mob farm. Um, I'll give you a quick tour, at least I'm gonna try to. Remember how I was building this and it wasn't really working well. I did a pretty, pretty piss poor job, honestly. Oh, hi. See, you're glowing because you're having a mining helmet. I wonder if that stops spawning. I don't know. Anyways, uh, I reworked the design and maybe you can see it like, you, you can't see it like this. I, I know there's a way to extend the size of the minimap, but I don't know how right now. But um, I made the path too wide and I also have them both chambers uh, that I reworked uh, funnel down here in, to this weird spot. I'm still trying to figure out which one, what is a good one. Oh, uh, look at you, skilled zombie villager. You're Arctic. I don't like that. And also, why is everyone wearing gold armor? What's up with that? I, I'd, I'd like some gold armor. So yes, um, I recently talked about um, motivation, I think, or, or did I? Maybe I didn't. I've been having problems recently with motivation. I think it, it ties into the starting something and then not sticking with it and then feeling bad for uh, starting in the first place. That's like an issue I've been bringing up recently and I've been trying to work on. And, well, uh, I've been uh, trying to gather more data on that. What do I mean by that? So when I say, man, I have problems sticking with things. The reason is like, you know, sticking with something requires you to, I think, build up some sort of a habit, right? Um, to, you know, regularly do it. You could say like, oh yeah, you just you just need motivation. I mean, and that, that that's kind of um, where I'm at right now. It's like, okay, some days I lack motivation. I know, you know, same with YouTube. I've been doing YouTube for friggin' so many years now. And I recorded every single day of those um, until I took a break. Um, so I know like how it is to do something despite not wanting to. I mean, yeah, everyone who friggin' has a job like, who, who goes uh, and works um, a job, knows that. Um, that motivation is hard to come by sometimes, and you just got to do it. Um, now, for creative endeavors that you're not forced to because you don't have an external motivator, um, there's there's internal motivation, extrinsic and uh, intrinsic. Uh, external and intrinsic, that's, I think, not extrinsic. Or is it? I think extrinsic is also a thing. Extrinsic and intrinsic. I'm getting my words mixed up. Anyway, basically pressure from the outside and pressure from within. Let's let's call it that. That's usually what you, uh, I guess, how you could put in um, reasons for motivation. Um, and motivation is, you know, is tricky to come by. But yeah, if you have something looming over your head, like a Damocles, Damocles sword, uh, figuratively over your head, you're more likely going to do it. Like, oh, if I don't do X, Y, Z, I'm going to sit on the street because I'm not, if I don't go to my job, I'm not going to make money and then I'm going to be on the street. That's a pretty strong motivator. Now, for creative endeavors, it is difficult um, to get the same, you know, it, it, the motivation should and often is coming from the inside um, or should come from the inside. Um, Ideally, I think um, you can create um, external pressure, uh, but as I was saying, one of the better ways to get into something um, and to overcome, I guess, the lack of motivation and the lack of pressure is by turning it into a habit. Uh, there's plenty of books out there and yada 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 and I could tell you I guess like oh some courses on skills there's plenty of courses on YouTube um those things uh, are um habits are are, are are really helpful to get over that hump because yeah you're just like brushing your teeth let's say if you brush your teeth in the morning which uh, you hopefully should do same in the evening um twice a day is a good idea um you just kind of do that if you've been doing it for many, many, many years. And if you don't keep up with it, it feels like something's wrong. Like, you know, I, for example, can't go to sleep if I know that I haven't brushed my teeth. Um, even 
let's say they are s not like grimy. Just knowing that I haven't brushed my teeth before bed is just not feasible for me. I have a hard time falling asleep. Um, so that's because, yeah, it's been a habit for so, so many years. By the way, um, let me quickly uh, talk about what I'm doing here. I'm essentially building a second chamber that will fall down into the chamber below and increase the spawn rate of mobs here. I just want to, like, do that. So I'm clearing out, essentially, this whole area here to turn this into uh, one of those places. That That's the idea. And in the meantime, we're going to have uh, um, mobs spawn as well. So that's going to be handy. Anyways, where was I? Ah, yes. Um... And I know I could probably, you know, uh, double dip here by, uh, double dip by creating these in a place where I haven't mined already, but I kind of would like to, I, I would like to, um, make use of the area that I already mined out. It's like a thing in my head. Don't worry about it. Anyways, while I'm doing that, let's talk more about, I guess, habits, um, so yeah, they're they're a very useful thing to have, and they're way more. Uh, I think one of the more legit, I guess, self help productivity. I don't want to say hacks because the term hack is stupid, and you're not. I, I I don't like when people use it like, oh, it's a hack. It's like just this easy thing to come by. It's still hard to stick to a habit, and it's tricky. Um, to get it right. So that's what I'm trying to do these days with some of my projects that I've that I would like to work on. Cuz I have some projects I would like to work on, you know, apart from like making a YouTube video. Um And yeah, YouTube is a good example because I've been doing it for so long that yeah, it became a habit and when I stopped doing it, it felt really wrong. Um, it, it felt wrong to not record videos. So now that I'm, you know, just doing some again, just for fun, for me, it, it feels good to be back in, uh, uh, to, to have this habit, to know like, okay, it's not that I'm a lazy person because, you know, that, that is a thought that I sometimes have. And that's something from my childhood that I, oh yeah, I don't have the discipline, you know, like, oh, you just gotta like pull yourself together and then everything will work out. Long story short, it's something to do with my dad. But, um, so that's that's something I've been, I guess, struggling with is like a, not feeling um, disciplined despite the fact that I am, I can be disciplined. But why do I keep doing a YouTube videos? Like, why did I stick along with it? Well, one of the things that helps with habits is... Um, to stick with them is to make them as easy to do as possible. And I, by that, I don't mean like making the the goal that you set for your habit like very easy. I think I should take a step back before I go further into like uh, improving on that. The idea of a habit, and you probably know, you might know these things. If not, let me let me introduce you to the idea of a habit. It's you take a small little task. Um, I don't want to go with the Jerry Seinfeld example because it's like it's good, but I don't really like it. Let's say you want to write a book, okay? A lot of people, what they will do is they will, like, sit down and they will start writing and maybe they'll write a thousand words and they're, you know, doing, you know, they're getting some stuff done. Maybe they'll keep it up for a day or two or three and then something comes up and they feel like, ah, oh, I didn't stick with it. I, they feel bad about themselves. All of that kind of stuff. Um, so... How would you go about turning that into a habit, something? Because, you know, if you want to write something, that's a long-term thing. You don't just sit down for two weeks, write down a book, and, oh, okay, I'm done now. No, you have to, this is, like, something sustained. You have to keep that up for months and months and months uh, if you want to, like, actually do this, if you want to finish that. And, yes, there might be uh, uh, outliers, like, you might be able to write 50,000 words in two weeks, for all I know. But the best approach is to do it every day. So you just turn it into one of your routines. Um, so the best thing to do is to start this would be to say, like, I'm going to write a hundred words a day. Okay, that's that's not a lot. That's really not a lot. But maybe that's where you should start. Um, I should write a minimum, let's say, of 500 words 
a day. And that's doable if you can write fairly quickly. And you're not you're not going for perfection. You just doesn't matter. You have to write 500 words. Doesn't matter if they're great. Doesn't matter if they're bad. Um, as long as you write those 500 words, you're doing all right. So let's say you want to write a 50,000 word script that takes you 100 days. So if you stick for 100 days just writing 500 words, which is a very doable thing, um, in 100 days you will have a rough draft of something. It's probably going to be awful um, or great. I don't know what your skill level is, but at least you will have stuck with it. And it's going to be easier and easier to keep something up if you just do it every day, if it becomes part of your routine. Um, that's why routines are a very powerful full tool of getting something, I guess, done. I'm probably preaching through the choir. You probably know those things, but, you know, you just get used to it. I mean... If you, if, you, if you have a job that you went to for a while and you have your tasks there, you just, at a certain point, you just do them. You don't remember to think about it. You go there, you do it, and that's just kind of what you do. It doesn't require a lot of, um, you know, m I don't want to say motivation, but it doesn't require a ton um, of energy to, I guess, get the ball rolling once you're used to it. And... I'm not taking, like, I'm saying, like, oh, you hate your job. It's still going to be hard to get there. But let's say you don't. It's just, you know, it gets easier. Anyways, why do I say all of those things? Because it's kind of, like, spooking around in my head. And one of the things that I'm trying to do is accomplish a few projects of my own. One of them being writing an adventure for a Call of Cthulhu tabletop roleplay game. Uh, session with my friends. I've been running Call of Cthulhu um, as a uh, keeper of arcane lore. Um, is it, it as it's called in that system? I guess a game master. Um, I've been running D and D before that as well. I've um, been picking that up in the last two years. Um, but we decided, you know, due to the pandemic, we switched to Call of Cthulhu, and uh, I've been running essentially adventures. Like Call of Cthulhu has tons of great adventures that you can run with your players. Um, you know that you can buy or even download for free. Um, and they're great. But I wanted, I've always been thinking like, man, I, you know, first of all, I never have the like same grasp um, on something uh, that someone else wrote than when I wrote it myself or came up with for myself because I had some like scenarios that I made in D&D &D for my players and um, I had a pretty good grasp on them because I knew what things were and I wasn't like messing it up, you know, after the fact. So uh, now I've been wanting to write one of those and that requires a little bit more prep work. Um, if you want the investigation phase, you know, the uh, finding out the mystery um, to be a little bit more, have more meat to it and not flounder too much. So I've been intending to write that and I just haven't gotten to it. I've been like starting to make like some scribbles here and there and just thinking about it, but I've never really finished up the task of doing so. I never finished up an adventure and I really want to run one um, that I've written myself. I also want to improve my writing because that's a thing I'm really kind of into. I really enjoy writing. Um, just, yeah, sometimes I like the motivation and then... Uh, I have a hard time getting into this um, state of just enjoying writing, which I do a lot. Um, that was also a whole nother thing with flow, but let's not go there. So yeah, taking that as an example, uh, I decided to create a habit of me just every day. I spend at least 15 minutes. I think that's what I what I what I set up. 15 minutes working on my adventure in what form doesn't matter if it's like drawing a map if it's writing out a character creating a handout it doesn't matter just 15 minutes to get me started and i will usually um you know those few times that i did it because i just kind of started the habit again i will um, usually do more. It's just about, you know, setting the smaller goal so you can still fulfill your goal even if things come up because things will come up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, they will come up. That's just life. Life is like that. Stuff comes up all the time. 
Uh, so yeah, that's uh, one of the things I'm trying to do. Um, another habit I'm trying to set up is vlogging more. I did a vlog, I enjoyed making it, and I want to keep doing it. But I never really have anything, or the last few weeks, given, you know, thanks to COVID, I don't feel I have anything to talk about. So I'm like, eh, I guess I don't need to film anything. But often I find things to talk about once I have the camera out and I'm working. Uh, I'm filming something. I just walk around and it's like, oh, let's check out the chickens. And then like, oh, there's this little thing I can talk about. And those things add up. Um, making a vlog for me is mostly just um, grabbing the camera and filming something. Um, whatever I've been doing because, you know, right now I've been working on uh, my uh, on our workshop for woodworking and other things. Um, I've been moving stuff over, and yeah, that's not very interesting. Like, it's not very interesting that I move, like, tools over. Who cares? But if I just vlogged every day, I could have been like, oh, this is it at the beginning, and this is after another day of working at it, and that will end up maybe, like, a minute total in my vlog, but it's going to be interesting because there's going to be a lot of progress, and it only took me, like, maybe five minutes or two minutes to actually just film it. So, oops, why haven't I been doing it? I mean, yeah, I'm just not in the habit to. I did vlogging, um, I did regular vlogs on Lazy Weasel um, a while back because I was just in the habit of just taking my camera everywhere and just hitting record whenever just something came up and then I just had footage and that footage was very easy to turn into um, a video because in the end it's it's about getting that footage so yeah that's another habit I'd like to pick up it's just like every day doesn't matter even if you don't have anything to do just film a scene just a moment a minute Maybe 30 seconds, doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna try to do that. I haven't started that yet, but it's one of those things, so... Um, yeah, that's that's what I've been up to. And I think I started talking about making your environment, making it as easy as possible, and that ties in a little bit into me making YouTube videos. Say, you wanna make YouTube videos, okay? And I'm kind of like talking about like in a way of like telling you about it, but also in just explaining my process. Let's say you wanna, maybe videos is not the best example. Um, let's say you wanna write that book, okay? It's like, oh man, I have this idea for the book and I wanna write it and yada, yada, yada. Okay. So you go ahead and said like, okay, I am going to set myself, like I'm gonna start this habit. I'm just going to set that goal um, for the next 30 days to write 250 words a day. It's not a lot. I mean, do a hundred, whatever. Just something. Just a little bit. Every single day. It'll add up. I mean, if you write a hundred words, you have 50,000 words in uh, about one and a half years. So, that's not bad. I mean, you're going to have eventually, like, your first draft. Anyways. So, you want to do that. What's, what, what's, what's... What do you need to do for this? You need, let's say you write on your computer, all right? Um, or let's let's say you write by hand, okay? And to write, you kind of want, like, you need to, like, find a quiet spot because you need to concentrate. And um, so let's say you have, like, a tiny room um, and you need, like, a surface to write on. So if your room is like kind of like cluttered and messy and everything's chaotic, now you want to write like, okay, first I have to find my uh, book that I want to write and I'm going to have to find a pen. I'm going to have to clear some space on that table. I have to do all of these things. I have to like make, you know, close the door. I have to like turn off my computer so I don't get distracted or turn off my phone. All of these things, right? Um... You have to do these things to get started. And that can be problematic because suddenly it's like, oh, okay, it's not just like do this thing. You have to like prepare. Um, you have to spend some time preparing this. Four, five, six, seven. Yes, okay. Um, eight. Okay. Should I put this? No, that's where that wall is. 
you know what that's fine anyways sorry I, i'm just like thinking out loud about um the how i how i set this up um i'm actually going to make those platforms now so that's three four five six seven eight right that is eight can i count one two three four five six seven eight yes so if you want to stick with it and you, you want to increase your chances of doing it if you have to do all of these things every single time you want to write something like a hundred words you're not going to feel like it you're not going to be like now i have to like all of this stuff in between um so what you want to do is you want to create an environment where that's easy to do you know if you don't really have to expend pretty much any effort in getting something started you're more likely to start it um it's as simple as that if you have to do 10 things to even get started on something you're less likely to do it let's take i think youtube videos might be actually the better example because i can explain it better why that helps for me so let's say you want to record youtube videos with a camera like you have a webcam uh, or just a camera and um, a microphone and all of those things right Every single time you want to record, you have to set up those things because let's say you don't have a dedicated space. You just like do it in your room and you can't just leave your cameras and your equipment up all the time because it'll be in the way, you'll fall over it and whatnot. So one of the ways to ease working on those things, actually, I don't need to put that full layer of cobblestone there. I can just do that. Um, just been distracted. So... You don't have to do these things um, if you don't have. <laughs> so you essentially set it up and um, that's going to take you like 15, 20 minutes to set everything up. And then you're going to have to fiddle around with the settings because the webcam is slightly somewhere else or the camera. You have to put it somewhere else and the microphone sounds different. All of those things. And it's going to make it difficult to regularly create videos and you're just not going to feel like doing it to make it easier. It would be just have a dedicated space for it. And I know that example doesn't apply to everyone because not everyone can have a dedicated space. But the the concept stays the same. Now, if you just have a spot where you have your camera always set up, your lights always set up, and all you need to do is essentially walk in, turn the lights on, hit record. That's way easier than going through the trouble of, yeah, doing all of this work over and over again so yeah that's why you want to essentially let's call it prime your environment like improve your environment to the point where it's as easy as possible to get into the habit man i've been talking about 22 minutes about this stuff i'm so sorry <laughs> so yeah that's a thing i've been trying to figure out i talk about it because it's in my on my mind right now and i don't I didn't intend to like give you like a lecture or something like that's just it helps me I guess to reinforce it by just explaining it to someone else one of the best ways to I think cement an idea a concept um for me at least is to explain it to someone else if I go ahead and am able to explain it to someone else um, first of all, I can find out where I'm lacking. Like if I'm like, oh, well, I don't really understand this part. I know I'll have to do some more research, but also, um, it's just another, you know, reinforcement of things that might already be in my head. So they will be set in there. That's, I guess, why I like talking about this stuff. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. What's been going on in my head. Um, let's talk about Minecraft again after like 22 minutes. You poor people. I'm so sorry. It's like, I just want to, I just came here to relax and then Weasel keeps talking about productivity stuff. I'm just saying, you know, you should try it. If you have problems, here's, here's, a, here's an easy one. If you have plants and they keep dying, uh, set up a habit of every day spending like five minutes or just, just checking on your plants, just having a look. Uh, is there, is there, is the soil dirty? Is it wet? That kind of stuff. Um, you should you should try to do that. That's how our plants stay alive. It's not that difficult. It's like, ah, oh, I don't have a green thumb. It's like, well, 
either you have like really the wrong choice of plan for your environment or you just forget to water them because most plants most house plants will do perfectly fine for a long time if you just water them anyways ah <sighs> so i've been working on this this is the uh, I guess fourth chamber, and I'm going to put water, uh, two water um, blocks um, at each end, and then hopefully they will spawn in here. I only make it too high, so I don't have any endermen spawning in here because I genuinely don't want them here. Um, but yeah, this is this is the plan. Before I close this up, I'm going to bring up all the water. Um, I should probably close those. And, yep, that actually was actually fairly quick. So let's go down and har- Oh, look at all the mobs below us. Excellent. This, this, this works well, this system. Okay, before we do that, let's harvest uh, some of our mobs. Wow! Okay, you are you have wounding, dear spider. I don't like that. I'm gonna clear you out real quick. Cool. All right, guys. We're gonna have to- Oh, Jesus. I don't know why that one was startled all of a sudden. Maybe I was too close. Let me get some more distance in here between us. Okay. Alright then. Uh, who's fighting the- oh, the spider. Okay. Ow! Okay, this is a problem. I'm- Well. There go all my mobs. This, uh, I'm still going to have to, like, improve on the design quite a bit. <laughs> okay. So, what if I, let's say... I'm going to re replace those with... No, bad spider, go away. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out the most efficient way of dealing with this stuff. Here, I'm going to put those blocks there. Shut up, nobody cares. Go away, it's a zombone. All right, that's bright enough. I guess this will do. The uh, why? Okay, there you go. I'm gonna take my axe because I want to repair my axe because it now has mending on it. So best way would be to I guess hit the the mops and then uh, with a sword and then collect it with my axe. But as of right now. I'm just gonna deal with this, yeah. Just repairing stuff. Same with the pickaxe. Essentially doing the same here. Hi! Please don't explode. I guess if they can't see me, they are not going to. Cool. Uh, so this is working well, but I'd like more. More! So this is why I'm working on, on this little, little, little structure here. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on- oh, right, buckets, water. We need water buckets. Yes, please, let's make water buckets. And I don't want to, like, walk up and down all the time, so I'm just going to create a little pool over here. Um. <laughs> Silly water. You freeze because I'm Frostwalker. Is is weird problem. Okay, so. Water, water, water. Okay, so now this gets me infinite water. So yeah, let me know your your thoughts on that stuff. I'd like to hear it. Um, habits can be really oh, okay. This is this needs to be one further in. Look at that. Made a mistake. Let's fix it. Easy enough. Just plop plop, and one further back. Excellent. I'd like to automate the killing process, maybe with some sticky pistons or something. Look at those slime balls. I came across a big one. Um, in between episodes, a big slime, and he gave me plenty of slime to make pistons with, sticky pistons. So maybe we can just push him up and just crush all of the mobs or something. But I do want the XP, so I guess that's not really feasible. A better... up. Oh, okay, this is, I guess, too far away. Well then. Sil silly, silly water. You don't do this. Okay. Give me those things. Anyways. But yeah, this all ties into um, the one episode where I was talking about starting something and then not finishing it up and then kind of beating yourself up for it. I hope to uh, 
work on that by having a system like Habits. And I'll most certainly will keep you updated. Okay. All right, this is good. One more, one more round of water, and then we're going to close this in, remove the torches, and we shall be good. I'm pretty happy with this. Now, yeah, right. This is gonna melt. I should just take off my diamond boots with the frost walker. I mean, I love it, but also it's really silly sometimes when you're trying to get water and you just walk to it and it freezes. Like, I'm not even on it right now. What are you talking about, game? Okay. Let me get the uh, torches out of here. And if I ever want to, I can just go up another level where then I would also mine some stuff. All right. And can I reach this one from here? Yes, I can. Now I could have just walked over like the goober I am. Why do I worry about this stuff? Okay, let's do this fast before mobs spawn in here that I don't want to deal with. Why did I forget this one? I don't know, because I'm constantly distracted. Okay. <sighs> so I've been thinking of... What am I hearing? Weird. Um, I've been thinking of like doing a live stream um, playing Minecraft, and I kind of was thinking of just doing one where I work on paths. I'm trying to come up with a way where I can do a live stream to hang out with y'all without, I guess, spoiling um, the progress I've been working on too far. I don't know if I should be concerned about this or if I should just stream a different uh, different game, I guess. I don't know, it's, it's complicated. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, do I want the, ah, I can just leave those open, why not? Can't, 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 I mean, it can hurt and it will hurt, but let's just leave it like that. Uh, let's light this so we don't have any bad surprises coming our way. Okay, good enough. And... Yeah, good enough. I'm gonna have to build some stairs up if I want to put another layer on there. Let's repair some of my stuff! Right, let's go with pickaxe. Okay, I'm definitely far enough away, right? I know it reduces the durability of the pickaxe. But I don't really know how to... You know what? Let's try this. <laughs> it's really tricky to switch the uh, item uh, back as quick as possible. One of the ways to deal with this would be to uh, have them cause fall damage so I can just kill them with a single hit. But I think this shall this shall do. Come here, buddy. Let me let me let. Okay, let's go back to the axe. Ow! How how did you do that? Do not, do not. Oh Jesus! Oh Jesus! Okay, this 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 thing down there doesn't work well. We're gonna have to uh, think about this again. Okay, what are you? You are. Some kind of special mob. Hmm. Okay. Not not too not too happy with how this is working out right now. To be honest. I guess what I could do. Do I have some signs on me? I want to experiment with two signs. I don't have any with me right now. Ah, they would also break. Hi guys. Let me just uh, introduce you to my friend the axe. Cool, cool. Oh man. You know what, I'm gonna spend the last few minutes ranting about Epic right now. Um, I mean, ranting is, is maybe the wrong word, but I am kind of annoyed by Epic. You might have been like paying attention to the um, hashtag free Fortnite uh, uh, kind of situation where uh, Epic created their own payment system uploaded their app onto the App Store and then got removed from the App Store for doing so. So, why did that happen? Um, well, Apple, 
let me let me quickly explain this and this is probably something i could go further into in another episode if you guys would like um that's something you need to tell me um so if you upload an app as an app developer i can tell you like if you upload an app you agree to the terms of services on a platform those might be shitty you might not agree with them but those are the terms of service um in the case of Fortnite or Apple and Epic, it is that uh, Apple has their own payment system. If you buy an app on on your iPhone or your iPad or whatever, um, you do that through iTunes or basically the Apple payment service. It's all connected to your credit card or whatever. Um, it, it's being handled for that. For releasing an app on that phone and selling like in-app purchases on it apple will uh take a 30 percent cut like if you sell something for ten dollars let's say you know like your v bucks uh on fortnite for ten dollars apple will take three and will give you seven that's that's the cut so epic said you know what i don't like paying 30 percent i'm just gonna make my own payment system and just uh you know, charge, like, um, um, basically keep that money for myself if I have my own payment system because then they don't have to pay those 30% to Apple. And Apple didn't like that because that's how they make their money with the App Store. Now, there are several problems with Apple that, you know, I'm not going to go into. Apple being, yeah, really having some weird monopolist, uh, mono, monopoly, um, uh, monopolistic, I think. Would that be the right word? Anyway, they're holding essentially like a monopoly on their iPhones because it's their own device. It's it's a little bit complicated. But uh, ultimately, it boils down to that they have their devices and they don't allow third-party stores on it. They don't allow third-party software that isn't approved through their store. Like, yes, you could root your device, but they don't allow you to have a second, like install a separate store and like no you have to go through apple they're forcing you essentially to do that um that's a problem by itself and i don't agree with it but apple um if you have their store they have their own payment system and that's the rules so epic said no we don't want that we want like we don't want to pay you 30 percent. so we're making our own store and we are uh going to do that and then they remove them and that would be the end of the story, I guess. But it's not quite that simple. Um, obviously, Epic knew this was going to happen. This is everyone with two brain cells that works with apps knew that Apple would remove their app. Um, no question about it. It's not. It wasn't a question of if. It was a question of when. And they did it almost immediately because yes, they were violating the terms of service. Um, you can't just let that pass, because then why can't other apps do that? So, Epic went ahead and said, hey, uh, all right. Hey, players, Apple is, uh, you know, removing our app. They're, uh, you know, they're being a monopoly, and we're fighting against that by making our own store and breaking that, breaking the mold, yada, yada, yada essentially join the fight um and they had this video that you might have seen that's a homage to the old apple commercial um where in this one where apple was the underdog and essentially like fought against microsoft that was the the idea or ibm uh that was the idea that they were the underdog and Fortnite is positioning themselves, or Epic is positioning themselves as an underdog and saying like oh yeah we're just fighting the systems like okay no I don't like this. You know, I have two billion dollar companies, and Epic is now trying to mobilize their players to essentially like, yeah, Apple is the bad are the bad guys here. Apple, yeah, how dare they not let us have our own payment system? Again, I have a problem with Apple having a monopoly in, uh, for software distribution on their hardware device. I have no clear stance on how legal that is or anything like that. But the fact that Epic goes and says, like, yeah, join the fight. Like, seriously, we don't have anything else to fight over right now. We're just fighting. You want your players to fight for you so you can make more money, which ultimately it is about. If Epic can't have their own payment system, they don't have to pay that cut to Apple. Uh, and they kind of, like, phrase it as, like, oh, we're giving the savings back to the players. Like, this is about you, about you paying less money. It's like... 
No, it's about you making more money. You're just pretending uh, that you're doing it essentially for the players by making them pay less. Um, it's a digital purchase, and Epic's been making like 1.5 billion so far, even more on Fortnite. Like it's a multi-billion-dollar company at this point. M very, very wealthy multi-billion-dollar company, basically trying to pay less to another multi-billion-dollar company and trying to frame it in a way that they are the underdogs and they're just fighting oppression. Uh, well, mm, no. They're not, and it, it bothers me. I could go further into this, but I'm not going to. This is just my quick hot take uh, on this. Uh, Epic and Apple are fighting over um, essentially like who has to pay more or less money. This is not about uh, some freedom, because I know I, I I you could argue like okay, it's about allowing the third party software to be installed on devices. But ultimately it is not. And they're invoking 1984 as if Apple is, um, you know, the state surveilling and not allowing anything. Um, but they also got kicked out of Google Play for putting their own play, uh, payment system on there. And on Apple, uh, on Google, you can still download Fortnite on the Epic website itself, install it on your phone, and then use the payment system, which... Honestly, that's totally fine. I have no problems with that. Um, that's totally reasonable. And I think Apple should allow the site loading of apps. That meaning you can download Fortnite from uh, the website of Epic and you don't have to go through the store. But they're going through the store and then they put their own payment method on there and then they got removed. And now they're like, oh, free Fortnite. So to me, it's not entirely clear what they're trying to do. Are they trying to get Apple to open up to allow the site loading, the installation of apps from websites, which opens up the iPhone to a lot of like security risks? Um, not saying that shouldn't be allowed. Um, it should absolutely be allowed. You should be allowed to put whatever you want on your phone. It's your phone. You spent money for it. Uh, Apple shouldn't like force you to not install it. That being said, I also don't believe that Epic should be able to put an app on the Play uh, on their uh, uh, on the Play Store, Google in this example, on the Play Store, and also uh, circumvent the payment system from Google uh, to do that. Let let's say. You are, a, I'm, I'm already like way too far into this episode and I'm not getting anything done, but like, yeah, that's, that's, that's why it bothers me so much. Let's just say you are a vendor, um, on a flea market, right? Like there's somebody's like creating a flea market, uh, and says like, Hey, yeah, you can put your stand here, but, um, and I'm also going to like promote, let people come here. It's going to be filled to the brim, but I'd like uh, a 30% cut of all the money you make while you're here. Um, you don't have to take care of like getting people here. Uh, I'm going to help you with setting things up and whatnot. But for all of that, I'd like 30%. Now, the problem with Apple is that in this example, there is no other marketplace. There's no other flea market that, you know, somebody could go to. Or they're not even allowed to set up their own store somewhere. But, let's say you agree to that and you say, okay, I'm willing to put my stand here and I'm willing to pay 30%. All right, that's the deal. Now, eventually you're like, you know what? I'm paying so much money to them. I don't like doing that. I want to keep that money for myself. So what you're doing is like, oh, I'm just going to like, you know, uh, make them pay me some way else. So, uh the vendor, the, the the person creating the flea market doesn't, you know, can take those 30% away from me because they don't know it exists because I'm circumventing, circumventing the system. You're essentially like breaking the terms of service that you agree to where you said like, okay, I will pay you this. And now all of a sudden you're like, yeah, you know what? I don't want to do that, but I still want to take advantage of all, you know, I want to be on this marketplace. I want to like... Um, I want you to help me distribute and uh, bring customers in and all of this stuff. And then you're saying, but I don't want to like pay the agreed 30%. 
And when you do that, you get kicked off the marketplace of the flea market. They say like, no, like we agreed you would pay 30% of all the things you sell. You can't just not do that. We agreed to do this. Now, if that's too much, that's not part of the problem. I'm just saying they got removed for a very legitimate reason. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not defending Apple here. Apple is still a soulless corporation that I, you know, have a lot of disdain for, um, for their business practices because they're pretty awful. They're very, very awful, harmful, actively harmful to the environment and people working and um, the market itself. But, but, in this case, yeah, they were kicking someone off their platform that they own, they have the right to do so, and now Epic is trying to frame it as like, we're the underdog, we got wrong. It's like, nope, nope, you did you did not get wrong. You're a multi-billion dollar company. You're just trying to make more money. And they will frame it, and they do frame it as like, we're giving the savings to the players. Well, not quite. First of all, since it's a digital purchase, you could have just reduced the price and just have your players pay less. You're not producing a product that requires, um, you know, that where every sale requires you to put money into it. You know, it's not like a physical product where you need resources. You can sell as many digital items, skins, as you want. And anyway, they're still taking 10%, and it's 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 rather silly. And I think it has to do um, in part with Epic trying to set up their own payment system for app developers. Because they also make an engine that you can make apps with. Um and yeah, if they, they want to position themselves as another payment system and they will offer it to other developers, want, they would love to have their own Epic's game store or app store. And they will most certainly try to do that once the, um, you just mark my words, there will be an Epic game store on Google Play, uh, not Google Play, sorry, on um, Android. Epic will absolutely do that. They will have their own payment system, um, and they're going to try to force Apple to allow the same for people to install an external store. Don't 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 fight the battle for a corporation unless you know why you're doing it and you're doing it for yourself. That's all. That's all my ranting goes uh, was about. Is just about. Don't let. A billion dollar corporation fool you in that they're that you're fighting like a righteous fight against a monopoly and you're trying to break that. If that happens in the process, that's great. But that's not Epic's motivation. So don't fall into that trap. That's all I had to say. Sorry, this has been a long episode because I've just been ranting about first my 22 minute talk about stupid habits and then like, hey, let's spend the rest talking about some stupid shit on the internet about apps. Yeah, that you didn't expect that. Next time I'll talk more about Minecraft, I think. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I still hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts. If it was super atrocious to listen to, if you'd like to hear more of that, because as you notice, I can talk a lot about this kind of stuff because that's kind of what I do. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts, and I will hope I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm Weasel, I'm out, and I hope to see you around. Bye-bye.